Hello and welcome back. Today we're doing a normal video. Sorry about that last one. Yeah, I didn't really know what to film, so I just kind of filmed nothing. Uh, anyway, today we're playing on a world I got off of Steam Workshop called the World of Vrendeland, otherwise known as Friendsland. So maybe this is pronounced kind of like Friendland. I don't know. But it was made by this person. Thanks for the map. I want to make sure I gave credit for it because it is a lovely map and it's a good size. We're going to have six kingdoms fight. That's two of each race. What? What do you mean? There's another race we're not including? You're imagining that. There's no race there. There's only three races in this game. There couldn't possibly be a fourth one named the orcs that's way too OP that always wins whenever we include them, thus making the video no fun to watch because it's the same ending every time. That's silly. How could you think that? So we're going to do two humans, two elves, and two dwarves. We're going to spread them out as best we can, and we're going to see what they do. Now, I want to overview what we've got going on here. This map is full of resources. It is packed with resources. We got areas that are just a ton of stone surrounding the mountains. We got areas that are a bunch of silver. We got areas that are stone and silver. We got a bunch of gold right here. The most notable has got to be this streak of adamantine up here. Looks like there's three big chunks of it. Then we got a bunch of ore up here all the way up. Uh, some ore. And then I think we got some more adamantine nowhere else. There's also a little patch of mithril right here. I believe it's the only spot on the map that actually has mithril, along with this spot up here being the only spot there is adamantine. Now, I like that. I thought about balancing the map by adding some over here, but I like that this half of the map is gonna be fighting with just like silver and stone, whereas this half of the map will be fighting over the resource rich area. We're not gonna place anyone right here because that would just be too easy. We're gonna make this area be earned. So someone will get this area, and then we'll see what they do with it. Okay, let's jump in here. Let's place these guys down. We're going to spread them out as best we can. Let's put the humans down here. Let's put the other humans opposite side of the map, maybe over here. All right, let's put the elves close to this ore, because I think they're the weakest in here. So let's give them the close-ish spot. Let's put them here. So they got a ton of ore to work with. Hopefully that'll be enough to kind of give them a little boost. And then they are right at the beginning of all the Adam and Teen. So hopefully they'll move this way. But they're also going to be competing with the dwarves on the opposite side. So we're going to put these dwarves up here in the mountains. Okay, looking good. The other kingdom of dwarves is going to be down here. They are on their own island. If they take too long to leave it, that might become a problem. But it does start with a lot of stone and a lot of silver. And also kind of a lot of rhinos, which is sort of random. Considering the savannas way over here, I don't know why they're all the way over here. There's a little bit of sand here, but I don't think sand spawns rhinos. So anyway, nah, they'll figure it out. Okay, we need one more elf kingdom. Let's put it somewhere in this section, maybe right in the middle. Okay, there we go. Now, since I'm feeling kind of nostalgic right now, I feel like this is a very classic video for us to do. Just a big map, kingdoms fighting. It's kind of nice, you know? And how could we do that without spinning the wheel to give people some traits? Let's give the dwarves a trait. We're gonna give them genius. Now this trait is just gonna help them get started. This is not gonna stay with them forever. It's just gonna help this initial group of people get started. They might pass it on to some of their kids and then the trait will fade away into a memory. People will look back and think, remember when we were all smart? And people will be like, what do you mean? I don't even know what I had for breakfast this morning. Okay, the elves, strong. That's good for them since they're so very weak. Okay, these guys looking strong. Let's go ahead and name them as we go. Go. So these guys got genius. How about think and stone? You know, like rock and stone? You know what I'm talking about? You guys know Deep Rock Galactic. Of course you do. Okay. And or brothers. What do we give them? How about strong bros? Good. Okay. Humans. Attractive. Oops, almost just gave them death bomb. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? That's what I felt like when I was younger. I was like, all these people walking around with the attractive trait, but I feel like I'm walking around with the death bomb trait. You know what I mean? I don't know what that means. Don't read too much into that. I'm just saying that I was pretty ugly. And I'm not saying I'm great now or anything, but I mean, <laughs> at least I'm good at video games. Am I right, guys? Slogan is we like food. Let's call them hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, you get it? Because like hot dogs and then they're also attractive, like they're hot. Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay, elves. Looks like they're gonna get lucky. Let's go 
Oh, luck. How about that? I didn't want to do anything too crazy for traits. I put like three good ones and three like also kind of good ones, but not as good. They're pretty much all positive and they will make the bigger difference. But I like that it gives them a little bit of personality. Okay, dwarves are getting greedy, which means humans get ambitious. Okay, dwarves get greedy, which means we call them greedy cog. Yeah, greedy cog. Let's, let's spell it like that, like it's supposed to be spelled. Okay, humans get ambitious and that starts us off. Holy Maboe? Forged by honesty. Let's just call them goals. Yeah, it's good to have goals and ambitions. It's like the dwarves are missing a guy. Let's go ahead and just boop. Make that all nice and even. Okay, cool. We uh, we are ready to go. Goals down here has a lot of land. It's a little bit crowded, but it's a lot of good land. They got some ore, mostly stone. So not a lot of resources for them, but it looks like they got a little lucky and uh, some rocks have popped up over here, including two adamantine ones. So that's kind of nice. Hopefully they make it up to the beach up here before it's too late. They are connected to the mainland by this one little tiny spot here. So they can get through to this main area which is connected to a lot of these other areas so they're kind of part of the mainland unlike the dwarves over here who while they do have a pretty good size island they will have to take a boat to connect themselves to the rest of the world now if they take their time and say stay out of the conflict they could potentially just capture this island take all this stone capture this island take all this stone uh, I don't know make lemonade I am I mean I hope not that doesn't sound very nice to me that seems kind of rude maybe go down here take over lemonade an island it's not uh, not a great island but you know when life gives you lemons and then they got this sort of uh banana shaped island here and this little guy that you know maybe maybe they could just be like the island people if they can stay out of the conflict because they're not on the same land people will just not even know they're there and they can just get stronger although the rhinos are giving them some trouble starting out here but you know whatever they'll figure it out um oh luck is in a great spot it's just a matter of how quickly they realize that because their starting area is great just a nice big plot of grass plains but they do have to cross the desert and the swamp and if they do there's a ton of silver gold stone more gold and if they go far enough they could reach this mithril up here i think that this adamantine is going to be a little out of reach for them i think the dwarves are going to kind of block it off pretty quick here looks like they're already getting to this first patch which is going to be huge for them and then the elves hopefully are doing the same thing yes look at that they move straight west and they're taking it so these two people are going to be rivals for sure they're both marching along a line of adamantine and they're going to meet in the middle i tell you what over the big chunk so that'll be really interesting to watch these strong bros over here have a ton of ore to work with as well whereas i feel like this is not that much well it's a lot but it won't last them forever up here we got the hot dogs they got a pretty okay starting spot they do have the attractive trait which is one of the better ones and they've got a good amount of like nice land but it's gonna be tough for them once they need to expand i think because where are they gonna go this way if they can get to this ore, that would be good but then they're gonna have to go up against the adamantine chad elves both strong and armored to the smithereens with this crazy looking ore. But I think they can make it work. And then last but not least, the what? The dwarves are dead? Well, they were at 30 a second ago. What happened? There's no way the rhinos killed them. This rhino's got 10 kills. This rhino's got 9 kills. Dude, why were they unable to kill the rhinos? All right, well, rules are rules. They're they're done. I guess if this island is too too tough to live on, someone will have to come up here later when they're stronger enough to conquer the buffaloes and rhinos that roam these lands. I definitely thought the center would be safe, but I guess the rhinos just kind of kept moving their way further and further, so I don't know, man. All right, well, there's, there's one down. Hopefully you weren't rooting for those guys because they are already dead. But it does free up this section of the map, this island as well, which no one is on currently, and then now this. So this is all, all five of these kingdoms are on the same land. They can all reach each other physically, but they all have the access to all these islands. So maybe that kind of makes it more fair to have everyone on the same land with the option to leave. Oh, strong bros and think and stone. The rivals we predicted fighting over the ore. Looks like they both ran out. The dwarves used up all of their adamantine with the exception of a few rocks and the elves have done the same. And now there's all this in the middle and they have found reasons to fight each other. They don't have the ability to smelt that ore yet, I don't believe, so they're probably not using it. Yeah, they got copper weapons still, but it motivates them to figure out how to use it, and then uh, when they do, it's all over. But right now, they're probably just stockpiling it. Oh yeah, this village has 59. How about you guys? How you doing? 14 and 33. Cool. 
All right, the strong bros have like 80 population on the dwarves here. Now this looks like a very one-sided battle because the elves are so much bigger and have more of the ore, but the elves are so weak that it does take a lot for them to beat anyone in a fight. So we'll see how much the strong trait helps them because some of them still do have it. So, I mean, this could be the end for the dwarves, but I don't know. I feel like they still have a chance because the dwarves are beefier. So if they do it right, I think they'll be okay. Anyone else at war? No one yet. Hot dogs are still chilling. That looks like they're about to hit the edge of their land. I would be pretty relieved if I was them that these two people got in war because then it's like, hey, maybe someone will just destroy the elves and we can just take all this ore for ourselves. Not a bad gig if you ask me. They're out here just living their lives waiting for their chance to take the land. They don't even have to fight for it. It'll it'll free itself up for them. We got 190 to 150 so the dwarves population has gone up a little bit and the elves is actually going down so I think that the dwarves are gonna be able to put up a fight. We'll see who wins this war. Oh luck down here I believe is the biggest kingdom right now. Yeah they're right in the center and like I said earlier they kind of have a lot of bad land but they have a lot of quantity and if they spread out properly they'll be able to get a lot of resources but it'll be hard to defend themselves when they do get attacked because they're so spread out so if uh if goals down here beefs up an army pretty quick and attacks them i feel like they could wipe them out but these elves definitely have a chance to uh build a pretty strong force before then they just got to get all the way down here look at all that mm, it looks it looks delicious okay how we doing 167 to 180 now 170. The dwarves are not messing around. There's like 10 of them in here just destroying everyone. They are just, they're angry. This guy's got nine kills and he's crippled. He's still out here getting kills. He's got four kids at home. He doesn't care. He's doing this for them. How was work today, dad? Not bad. It killed nine people with a stick. Also, this guy, whew, 28 kills. <laughs> they're just annihilating people out here. How do you get 28 kills against elves with the strong trait? by the way. So yeah, I feel like they're gonna be okay. You can see the humans over here swooping in on this ore, or at least checking it out, watching the war. Not getting involved, mind you, just checking it out. Goals has just taken the lead on number one on population, just barely. They're really side by side with O Luck over here. And these three up here are all pretty much the same as well. 160, 140, 160. There's definitely multiple types of zones. The really rich lands where there's war, the kind of edge lands where there's, you know, safety, but not a lot of resources. Then there's the really spread out kind of barren lands with lots of resources and there's them which are kind of in the same situation as hot dogs where the resources are decent but they will have to move forward. It looks like Think and Stone and Strong Bros has declared peace which is actually surprising considering I feel like the dwarves could have wiped them out but I think their army was weakened a lot <laughs> with the, the, those like three people that survived that war. Uh, good for them though. But yeah, the ore is still up for grabs, and I don't think anyone's currently grabbing it except for this kid who really wants- Oh, sorry, not a kid. You're eight years old now. It's time to uh, start working. Okay, Goals has just declared war on O Luck, and they're about to go across the entire map to kill this one person. All right, well, hopefully that works out for you. Oh, it looks like O Luck is about to counterattack big time. It's about to go down. Humans versus elves, and it was ambitious versus lucky. Now we found that lucky is actually a pretty good trait, at least. Maybe it's just, I don't know. I don't know how good it actually is, but our last video that we did traits in, the lucky people like went from being last place to first place somehow. Um, so by some manner of luck, you know? So maybe they'll maybe they'll make that happen again today, but somehow all of their army they just counterattacked with just vanished. And now the humans are here just kind of laughing at them. So uh, it's not looking good for them, I don't think. Especially since the direction they need to be going is downwards, I think, to get all this land. And if they can't, then uh, they got nowhere to go. Also, I don't know why they got two armies right here just chilling. Looks like they destroyed a small village and they're like, another? successful day the war is over it's like no man your homes are being torched right now <laughs> too bad they don't have cell phones am i right guys oh hot dog declared war on strong bros dude this is like playing out so strategically oh thinking stone just declared war on oh luck so oh luck is toast they're right in the middle of two big kingdoms that want their land and now a weakened ironically weakened kingdom of strong bros is now being destroyed by hot dogs which is not a sentence that i thought i would be saying today but here we are and i think if they don't 
chicken out, I think they could easily wipe them out. 90 population versus 170. If the hot dogs want to actually have a chance in this war, they do need this land. Although, look at them. They're actually, they crossed the water. Not just here, but over here as well. Oh, just kidding. This person, oh no, just killed them. <laughs> okay, yeah, strong bros are pissed off, dude. They're not going to let this happen without a fight. But yeah, the uh, hot dogs have made it to a different island, and it's a good one too. Tons of stone, blessings biome, you know, some rhinos here and there, but it looks like most Mostly bunnies. You can handle a bunny, right? You'll be fine. But yeah, I think we're gonna see a kingdom get wiped out here pretty soon, and I think it's gonna be Strong Bros first, but if the uh, dwarves up here use these armies, then it might be O-Luck first. Population dropping rapidly. Goals is up to 500 population, which is a very strong lead. Second place being 260. They have doubled their score, which is crazy, because their land, like I said, is not that good. They just have a lot of room to spread out, and now they're they're being aggressive. So, I mean, you know, they're ambitious. I'll say that much. Uh, Thinking Stone just declared war on Strong Bros again. I think that's gonna probably be it for them because they don't have much left. And now they have two pretty strong kingdoms coming to kill them. And uh, that's not what you want in this situation. I feel bad for all these little guys running around. They, uh, it's pretty brutal actually. If you think about it, I know it's a cute little uh, pixely game, but like we can root for these guys all we want, but they're out here like kind of just obliterating kids, you know, without a second thought, you know, is that really, is that really what we should be doing? I know like, hey, look, don't get me wrong. These are some nice shiny rocks. I want them too. But there's a couple things on my list of things I wouldn't do for these rocks, and pulverizing children is on that list, I tell you what. You gotta have limits, even for shiny rocks that make cool weapons and armor. Okay, I think that's it for the strong bros. And oh, look at that, perfect timing. The elves are getting wiped out in unison, so sweet. I will say, when the strong bros declared war on Thinking Stone earlier, I legitimately thought, okay, that's probably gonna be the end for Thinking Stone, because the strong bros had the strong trade, of course, and like way more population. But the dwarves turned it around, weakened them, and then I guess the elves were like begging for mercy because they declared peace. And then Hot Dog stepped in and it was like, nah, man, you gotta finish the job. And then uh, it looks like now they're fighting each other. Jeez, everyone wants this land. There's not even that much, <laughs> there's not even that much adamantine left, but I guess, I don't know, you gotta stop them before they use too much of it, huh? Crazy. Okay, well, O-Luck is gone, of course. Strong Bros are gone. We've got two humans and one dwarf kingdom left. Half the kingdoms have been eliminated. One by rhinos, and the other two by being teamed up on by their neighbors. And now I think that uh, the dwarves could wipe out the hot dogs right now if they really wanted to. I think it's very possible that they just make this happen. Look at that, 228 to 360. And look at these armies they have. My man, I don't wanna be going up against these guys at all, especially with what we've seen them do so far. They were absolutely brutal to the strong bros, like teaching them a lesson, even though the elves had so much more population than them. And now the hot dogs are all spread out and you're gonna have to, it's gonna be a lot of work to get rid of all of them, which is just true. Such a hot dog thing. You know, you buy the 12 pack and you know, you just wanted one, but you can't. You gotta buy the 12 pack. Okay, goals is at 760, 770 now. They have the perfect situation. They have all this empty land in every direction and their only two remaining opponents are fighting each other over all the resources up here. <laughs> like, I mean, it looks like the dwarves are moving down into this land as well, but if I was them, I'd just say, screw it, forget about the hot dogs, take this land block off goals down here, and then deal with all this. I mean, if you can do both, then cool. But I think that they're wasting a lot of time eliminating an otherwise not that big of a threat kingdom, or at least not a threat anymore. And the real threat grows 800 population to 450 to 120. Now, something I can see happening is the goals working their way up kind of taking this area, right? Taking all this land. You know, you think that's a really bad thing, and it is for the dwarves. But the dwarves also have access to all this land if they destroy the hot dogs. So it could become like a half and half thing where the thinking stone people have this whole upper region and say this whole island here, and then goals kind of spreads up through here. And then, you know, then they just kind of build their forces from that point on. And who knows who will win in that situation. Are these, are these hot dogs down here? What are you guys doing way down here? here, dude. They're like, let's attack. This is like the biggest flanking maneuver I've ever seen. These guys 
guys are stranded halfway across the world trying to attack the army from the backside and they're not even going to make it to the village place or maybe they'll just destroy the village and i don't know maybe the dwarves will pull their armies back but uh oh it looks like they did actually where are the dwarf armies right now oh over here i don't know man it's like they're gonna load up a boat probably oh yeah look they're sneaking up the coast here okay they're gonna surround them wait no way the hot dogs are setting up a new camp the hot dogs are gonna win this thing i know it i can feel it okay dwarves 540 humans 900 they're growing at similar rates, despite the dwarves being in a war. But I think that Goals is just being left alone for too long. They've hardly broken a sweat this whole time. They had to fight Oluk a little bit earlier, but even then the dwarves came in and finished the job for them. They've just been kind of just chilling, just stockpiling resources and spreading along all the land. And I respect them for it. No way, think and stone just made peace with hot dogs. What kind of deal did they make you? Was it mustard? Was it ketchup? Was it relish? It's a little hot dog humor for you. A thousand population to 580. I feel like, I don't know if they have a plan here, but I need to see it, you know? They gotta, they gotta bump up the speed a little bit. They gotta start blocking these guys in. Goals, after all this time, has not really made that much progress up into this area. And this is the only section they can come through, is up through this mountain range. And so, like, Thinking Stone could just... Oh, there it goes. I was gonna say, Thinking Stone could just kind of take it over before they get there. And then it would be a really hard thing for them to push through. But uh, I think it's a little too late, and now all the dwarves in this area are all really spread out. And that little squadron of hot dogs actually <laughs> actually destroyed quite a bit down here. Oh, Goals just declared war on Thinking Stone. Okay, fellas, hear me out. <laughs> Goals and Thinking Stone fight it out, okay, for a long time. Most of them die. All the while, hot dogs building their little secret colony over here, getting blessed in the blessed biome, gathering all the materials they can, and then maybe they declare war when everyone's been weakened, you know? Maybe, maybe that's what happens. Maybe Hot Dogs wins this thing. <laughs> I'm going to say probably not, but uh, I would love to see them put up a fight at the end here. I think Goals is going to pretty much steamroll the dwarves, but since the dwarves got all that adamantine and mithril, and the humans pretty much just got like, what, silver and stone, the equipment-wise, the humans are way outmatched. So we'll see if that plays a big role in this thing. But like I said earlier, I don't think that they necessarily can use that material yet. Yeah, they, they've only advanced high enough to do silver, so it'd be quite the situation if they get wiped out before they can actually use the adamantine. Although, I noticed the humans were 10 levels higher, and it looks like they're a little more advanced, so if they get a hold of the adamantine, I feel like they'll be able to use it a little bit faster. I don't know, we'll see. The dwarves are definitely doing their best to defend, but the humans are still making a lot of progress, and they're working quickly too. Now, reminder, these guys were the genius trait, and these guys were the ambitious trait, which is really surprising to think that the genius trait, which makes them advance their culture faster, only hit level 30 while the team without the genius trait hit level 40 just because they expanded so much more. So it, being smart isn't everything. You gotta be ambitious. It's actually kind of, that's actually kind of profound. Think about that for a second. Smart does not equal success. What equals success is of course, hot dog. 490 population to 700. Oh, whoa. I didn't realize they were being counterattacked. The dwarves did a lot of damage down here. Okay, well, at least it's not going to be easy for them. Whoa, no way. They destroyed, like, their center, like, capital village. That's crazy. 800 to, uh... 500 is still a pretty strong lead by goals, but the dwarves are putting up a fight. Good for them. You love to see it. It's going to be a lot of work, though, for them to uh, stick the landing here because they're pretty evenly matched. And if they take too long, the dwarves start getting adamantine weapons. Oof. All over, man. GG. The humans are really out here making it happen. Look at this army. Not even that big of an army, but they're just being so quick about it because none of these villages are very defended now because I think they eliminated all the primary dwarf armies. They got pretty much no defense. Look at the, the here's their army right here. They got, they got one guy with six HP. I think he's about to die. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry we didn't believe in you. You're gonna be just fine. Defend the kingdom. You're the only one left. Think about it. Your village burns around you. You're gonna stand by idly and watch it happen. It looks like that's exactly what he's gonna do, to be honest. He's just standing perfectly still. Meanwhile, <laughs> here they come. Buckle up. He's about to save the town. 
I know it. Oh, wait, he's dead. Yep, he died from an arrow. Okay, did they counterattack anymore? Looks like they still got a couple people down here. Oh, their, like, last army is down here. Okay, I mean, you know, they'll do some damage, but they're not gonna destroy a thousand population worth of villages down here, you know? The dwarves are down to 150. It's so sad. I liked their name. I liked their location. I like what they did earlier. They really, they really did a good job taking out the other elves. They were a really strong kingdom, uh, but the ambitious trait is really good if you're left alone. The the Oluk kingdom took a little too long to get started, and they were elves. They were a little weak, so goals down here didn't have that much conflict against them. They were able to kind of just speed run expanding, and then they were able to attack on their own terms. It really helped having the dwarves kind of help them eliminate the elves, because they wasted less time and population on it. That kind of helped the humans uh, build up their strength so that they could ultimately destroy the dwarves in the end. Kind of a betrayal, you know? They kind of worked together, and then they were like, thanks for the help, now I'm going to destroy you. And yeah, it looks like probably the end for them. But you know what? I gotta say, they put up a good fight. I think they really did. There was multiple times when I thought they were gonna turn it around, because they looked like they could've. Uh, it was just a little bit too late, and you gotta respect that, you know? And there they go. Thinking Stone is gone, which leaves just hot dogs left against goals. <laughs> In the bottom left corner, we have goals sitting at 1,500 population and a whole lot of land. And on the top right of the corner, their opponent, Hot Dogs, with 340 population. And, you know, honestly, access to a lot of good land that's now empty. So, I mean, I don't think they can do it, I'll be honest. I do not think they can do it. I don't think they have a chance. But it's not like they don't have options. They're not stuck. Like, they're definitely not done yet. So let's go ahead and crank up the speed and see what plays out here. Because this might take a little bit, and it really just a matter of uh, if goals keeps moving, which it looks like they will. I don't think that's a problem for them. They're very ambitious in that sense. And then the hot dogs, they've kind of just been staying pretty slow growing in like expanding and population. I don't know why their population is struggling so bad. It goes up by five and then it goes down by five. I don't know what's killing them. Maybe they're choking on hot dogs, but they just elected a guy named Rush as their king. So hopefully that turns things around for them. Hopefully they speed things up from this point on. But uh, yeah, they're, they're 400 and Goals is at 2,000. Goals just declared war on them. And I think that we know what's going to happen, unfortunately. I liked the hot dogs. Don't get me wrong. I think they're pretty chill. But you got to respect the hustle of these ambitious dudes down here. That's how you get it done. You just don't stop. You just keep going. And since it's now humans versus humans, this will be extra quick because they don't have to kill everyone. They just have to take over the villages, which will be a lot faster. They just have to eliminate the armies. They don't have to kill every villager and boat. They just capture them. Farmers are just like, hey, man, we'll work for whoever, all right? We're not going to fight. We just want to grow crops. Oh, I got to change my shirt to a different shade of green? No sweat, okay? I'll do it. Well, how did they take that region back? <laughs> okay, all right. Joke's on them. The hot dogs have all the adamant. Can you imagine what a great last stand that would be? Hot dogs backed into a corner, but they've all got full adamantine armor and weapons, and they just destroy goals. Don't mess with the hot dogs. Boom, there's another one down. The final hot dog makes its last stand, and that's it. The hot dogs have been eliminated. Goals sitting at 3,500. Look how much they expanded just during that war with hot dog. They moved all the way up here. They pretty much own the whole map now. Man, that was pretty pretty ambitious of them. Good for them. Cool. Thanks for watching. I, I enjoy doing these big world ones. Hopefully you guys are doing well today and I hope to see you in the next video. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your ideas for other future videos. And hopefully that world box update comes out soon because I need some new content. I tell you what. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.